This is a screen capture video to demonstrate how to make modifications to Boston Virtual Imaging solo sites. A solo site is a standalone website intended to help you market a single real estate listing. Uh, we can set these up for any listings that you have. They're fairly easy to set up and they're based on a predefined template. So the very first thing that we do when we uh, set up a solo site for you is we uh, create an editing, we call it an edited, editing URL, and we send that to you via email. Uh, I've got it up here in the uh, address bar right now. And what happens is uh, when you access that editing URL, it gives you a look at the solo site, but there is a uh, username and password field and a login button up here in the top right. So you can see that this site is looking very, very sparse. Uh, don't get too nervous about that. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build out this solo site so that it has all the information we want to display about this property. And we're using a uh, one of our customers uh, user profile, so we'll get to actually work with real information. So I'll put in my username and password. Uh, username is usually your email address and password is typically a completely random string of characters. And we'll log in. Now the first thing that you'll notice uh, when we log in is things pretty much look the same, but there's an edit link up here on the top right and the logout link. We'll click edit. <clears throat> okay. So we see basically an editable representation of the solo site. Things are generally in the same spots where they would be uh, when this is viewed by the public, but all of these elements are editable. The first thing that I'm going to do is click Show Company Logo, and I'm, then I'll click Save and View so that you can see how this logo displays. Whenever we have somebody who uses a solo site for the first time, we always recommend that they send us a custom header file like this. This is all one file. Uh, this was created by um, the uh, administrative uh, staff member in this client's office, and they sent us this file that we use. Um, if you have, if you're a real estate agent and you work in a company and you have somebody in your office who has graphic design skills, uh, we can send you the specs on how they should prepare this file. But we really recommend that uh, people send us a custom header file like this. So I've checked the box and let's just click save and view and see how it shows up. Okay, so our site is still looking very sparse, but now we have our custom header file there. Let's add a, we'll add a, um, a headline here. So we'll just put single family home in Brookline. And just to show that uh, this field is for the subheader, we'll type in subheader goes here. And we'll click Save and View. And there's our headline and there's our subheader. Uh, some elements are predefined. You'll see that we already uh, include a link to the customer's personal website and we include the contact information that we keep on file on our system. We'll go back to edit and I want to uh, mention one quick thing. You'll see there's a save and view button and a save button. These both save the changes that you make but they operate a little bit differently. Save uh, saves your changes but it keeps you on the editing page. If I just click save like that it saves and I'm still in the editing page. Save and view saves your changes and kicks you back out to the public uh, version of what the public will see. So we'll get back to edit. <clears throat> Let's put a price in here, include the dollar sign. We'll call this $999,999 and we'll click save and view. And there it is showing up. Let me show you how to add some more highlights. Uh, throughout this editing interface, you'll see these little plus sign characters associated with different types of content that you can add. What those do are they add a form field to allow you to add another element. So we'll say four bedrooms, 
and we'll add another one. We'll click the plus sign, three bathrooms, uh, and let's say uh, 4,000 SF for square feet. If you change your mind and you don't want that additional field, you can click the X, okay? And we'll click Save and View. <clears throat> and there are our highlights, four bedrooms, three bathrooms. We'll go back to Edit. And if you decide that you want to get rid of something that you've already saved, you can click the Delete button and click Save and View or Save, either one. And now that those bedrooms or the bathrooms are gone. So that's how you add highlights. <clears throat> Most of these other things follow a similar convention. If you want to add a feature, you would click the plus sign and let's say hardwood floors. And if we want another one, let's say large backyard. And we'll click save and view. And our features show up down here. Hardwood floors, large backyard. All right. We'll go back to edit. I want to show you how to include a link. Let's say there's something nearby. There's a website that you want to reference from your solo site. Like uh, it's a local park or local restaurants. Or um, if you're, let's say you're in Boston and this is a neighborhood association. Uh, you can create custom links. We'll click the plus sign. And there are two fields here. I'll explain why. And there's also this B checkbox. Uh, the two fields uh, are the, the display text that will display on the page and then the URL which, which this will actually link to. So let's just for demonstration purposes say we want to, we'll just do Google. Uh, so we put Google, but you can't just put Google into your, into a browser that's not the link that's on the back, side, back end, we have to include the URL. So we'll put www.google.com and we'll click Save and View. <clears throat> and now we have a link uh, to Google. I wouldn't recommend creating a link to Google because that's not very valuable for people, but we did this for demonstration. So if we click on the link, now we have a link to Google. I want to mention the concept of branded links. Now, <clears throat> whenever we create a solo site for a property, for a customer, a customer's new listing, we also will create a version that is suitable for attaching to your MLS listing. Most MLSs have regulations which restrict the type of agent branding which can be included in marketing material attached to an MLS listing. Essentially, MLS doesn't want an end user using the system to be able to identify the listing agent in any of the marketing material, any of the listings marketing material when it's viewed on the MLS system. And I go, won't go into the reasoning for that, but essentially if there's something, if you're creating a link, say to your own personal website, or some site that identifies you as the listing agent, you have to check that B box. Uh, because what that will do is it will, uh, when, we, when we dynamically generate the non-branded version for MLS, we'll make that link invisible so that it complies with regulations. And if we want to delete this link, we'll click Delete, and we'll click Save, or Save and View, and now that link is gone. But let's just, for kicks here, we'll put it back. And we'll click Save so that we stay on the page. <clears throat> and that's saved, and we have that. Uh, details are just another kind of formatted text that, go, that goes on here. We could put, let's say, rooms, and we'll say this is, uh, we said four bedrooms. Three bathrooms, let's say we want to put size, we'll put 4,000. Let's say this is a condo, we want to put condo fee.
Okay, and we'll click Save and View so that you can see how those show up. You don't have to include details, but some people like the um, they like the flexibility to have content on different parts of the page, so that's where our details show up. We'll click back to edit, and we'll remove this subheader. All you have to do is highlight it and delete it. <clears throat> okay, I showed you how to do features. Disclaimers are a similar thing. It's just another type of text. You don't have to have uh, content in any of these fields, but it's another type of text, and I would encourage you to play around with that to see how that ends up looking. Uh, this large chunk of text is a, a chunk of text that's intended to be a paragraph below where the slideshow uh, displays. So let's just, I'll just copy this so we can get a whole bunch of text here so that you can see where this display is. Pretend we have two paragraphs of text. And it shows up here under the slideshow. Now you can see the slideshow is empty because we haven't uploaded any photographs yet. We'll do that now. You can upload your own photographs and change the sequence in which they display. There's the upload button or upload link here. We'll click that. And again, you'll see a small plus sign uh, that is intended to uh, give you additional upload fields. Like here's an upload field, but instead of just uploading one, we can upload, we can get more upload fields. So we'll click this a few times. Every time we click it, we get another uh, file upload. And you can do this up to five times. So let's choose some photographs. This is uh, just a, I'll put a few of these. All right, so just to keep this demo short, we'll decide that we don't need five upload fields. We'll just use three and click Submit. Depending on the file size, this could take uh, a long time or it could be short, depending on the file size and your internet upload speeds. So here we go. We have three uploaded. Looks like we have... Um, a roof deck, a kitchen, and an entryway shot. So those are uploaded. When we X out of this, the editing page will refresh. And if we go down to the bottom here, there are our photographs. So these are going to, to display in a slideshow. Let me show you how that works. We'll click Save and View. The first time the slideshow displays, it might take a second in order to process the images and cache them. So these now display in a slideshow format. We'll click on edit and I'll show you how you can adjust the timing or exclude images from being displayed or change the sequence. So we'll click back to edit. First thing I'll show you is how to change the sequence. You'll, if you hover your mouse, if you drag your mouse over this rectangle that contains each photograph, you'll see the mouse cursor changes to a four-way arrow. I'm going to hover and then just click, and I can drag that photo up or down now. Now it's a, I can change the sequence. And when I get it where I want, you see that yellow rectangle appears behind it. I just let go of the mouse, and it drops into place. So now I have my roof deck first, kitchen, and then the century way. If I click save and view, it should reflect that.
there we are. Now we have our our um, roof deck first, and then our kitchen shows up. Let me show you how to change the, the display duration of each photograph, and also you can decide to exclude a photograph. So to change the duration, you can just change it here. The default is six seconds, but you can make it, say, four seconds for each one. And you can decide not to show a photograph. So we'll uncheck this show box for this entryway, and we'll click Save and View. So now you can see we only have two photographs in our slideshow. Uh, we have the roof deck and the kitchen. And we change the display duration from six seconds to four seconds so they rotate through a little bit faster. We'll click Edit. If Boston Virtual Imaging has produced professional photography for the same listing that we're doing a solo site for, then you won't have to do much of the photo stuff. We'll pre-populate your solo site with whatever photographs we've, uh, we've done for you. As we move our way down the page, you can see there's an element here, show legal text in footer. Uh, some people want to display legal text on everything that they put out there into the world in terms of marketing. So if you check that box, um, you know, that legal text is completely up to you. Um, but if you check that box, we'll click save and view. And we'll see how that looks. That shows up way down at the bottom here, right here. It says enter any legal text you want to display. Obviously, whatever you want to include there, uh, you can include. We'll click edit again. And the very last element on the page is um, a form that a form field that allows you to link your solo sites with other listings. And, and here's the use case. Let's say you have two listings that are currently on the market and you want people, uh, when they go to one solo site, to be able to see that you have other solo sites available to be viewed. Uh, you can select um, the solo site. This one says 190dudley.com. And when, that's the, when that is selected, now when somebody uh, hovers over now when somebody hovers over uh, the page, they can see a link, and if they click on it, <clears throat> they can go to your other uh, solo site. Okay, we'll click Edit. And let's just decide that we don't want that selected right now. Okay, I'm not sure how to, looks like there's a bug that doesn't allow us to deselect, so Alex, please don't include that when you edit. Let's not show that section at all. The last thing that I'd like to demonstrate is the ability to include an audio file. Uh, we have some stock audio uh, choices in, a, in an audio library that uh, we maintain on our system. If you'd like to add music to the slideshow, you can choose one of these audio files and you can experiment to hear how these sound. All right, so there's some happy music that plays along with this slideshow. And we can change it back to none. <clears throat> One noteworthy thing about audio is that if you want to have, if you want to record your own custom voice narration, you can do that. You can send it to us and we can, um, we can include that, we can add that to the property and you can have your own voice narration associated with the slideshow and your solo site. So we started with a very bare site and we've built it out in such a way All right, Alex, this is all going to get cut out, but I'm just going to keep this recording. I'm going to make a database modification to get rid of this, uh, this thing about the other sites. So just bear with me here, but we'll cut this section out.
All right. <clears throat> okay, that's now gone. Uh, I'm going to just re-record that section about audio. The last thing I want to demonstrate is that you'll see below the slideshow viewer placeholder on the editing page is a uh, drop down that allows you to choose an audio file. Uh, our system maintains a library of royalty free audio and if you'd like you can choose one of these audio files so that whenever your solo site loads the associated audio will play along with the slideshow. Uh, one notice that this only there it is. Uh, one notice that this only works on desktop browsers. It doesn't work on mobile. Um, but some of our clients will use that uh, to have us include a custom voice narration. You know, for example, if you wanted to just record your own voice narration for the property, you could send it to us or you could upload it through this upload link right here as an mp3 file and you could play your own uh, audio. And that, that audio goes for anything. You could upload your own music, you could upload your own voice file, just as you would upload the, um, as, just as you would upload a photograph, but um, just make sure that it's an mp3 file. because The system's only able to support the uh, audio as in mp3 format, so you'd click upload, and instead of uploading a photograph here, you'd upload your mp3 file. So that's it. We showed how to show or hide the company logo, how to add a headline, how to add the price, highlights, how to create links. We talked about the distinction between branded links and non-branded links. Uh, we talked about how to show, include details, how to add text to the description, add uh, features. We talked about how to upload and change the sequence and display duration of photographs. We talked about legal text. And um, we hope you enjoy using your solo sites. If you have any questions at all, we're always happy to help. Feel free to reach out to us. We'll just click Save and View here and show how we went from a very sparse looking uh, solo site to a site that's built out with uh, a lot more content. So thanks for listening and let us know if we can help in any way.